Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California, where it is bright and sunny and beautiful. And uh, it is Friday. Some, some might call it a Black Friday because Bitcoin is on sale right now. Anyways, January 21st, 2022 and well options expiration today. We did talk about that yesterday and how major pivots on price action typically um, get broken or get supported. And um, we've been talking about how to identify, you know, where a macro low is and confirmation, right? How do we get confirmation that the low is in? And until we actually get that, right? Everything everybody else is talking about on the internet is just hopium, right? Until we get a confirmation in a reversal in the daily downtrend. And what is a downtrend? Well, when price action is making lower highs and lower lows, and in Bitcoin land, uh, it's typically never a good idea to fight the daily downtrend. And you can go back and back test that. But we got a slew of lower highs and lower lows on the daily downtrend. And typically, um, that is going to be, you know, a tough trend to trade against, right? And I don't think it's lights out yet. And I do think there are some altcoins that are showing strength that when Bitcoin does turn around, they're going to be even stronger, right? Things like Atom, Phantom, Matic, Luna, Solana, you know, we're going to cover some of these today. Uh, we're going to talk about the NASDAQ and the S&P and the dollar. Uh, but the first things first, I want to jump into our underlying market dynamics and talk about one of the most important things that we have been covering is the open interest. And open interest currently coming in at $11.73 billion. And we did talk about a reset coming as Bitcoin open interest comes down to about $10 billion. That'll probably be one of our first indicators. Hey, macro low might be getting in somewhere around 10 to 8 billion. Okay, we got the global leverage ratio at an all time high. Leverage is continuing to tick up as price is going down. And, you know, typically um, we're going to have to see a washout of all the leverage for a reset to happen. So this needs to come, you know, back down probably somewhere around 0.16. Okay. And then what else do we have? Funding rates. Uh, funding rates are positive right now. Essentially people are going long right now into this downtrend, which is uh, a bit scary. Um, you know, basically fighting the downtrend, hoping, hoping, hoping things turn around. You're just hoping right? It's opium. And what we want to see though is funding rates to get negative. Right now people are paying to go long into a downtrend. A little bit crazy if you ask me. Uh, on the, on this was the December 6th last low funding rates went negative. So you're essentially uh, getting paid to go long at this point. And that is typically, you know, one of the times where it might be a time to, you know, take a long position. Needless to say, um, we'll be keeping an eye on the funding rates. And if these things start to go really negative, that's going to be another sign that maybe that low is in. Additionally, another sign, the fear and greed index. We've been talking about this one. It's coming in at 19. We're in the extremely fearful zone. We have been saying, hey, look, probably takes Bitcoin 30 to 60 days to dig itself out of this hole. And very similar to what we saw in the summer from May to July, right? And that was about three months. Hey, this could take two, three months as well. So we want to see the extremely fearful zone for some time before that macro low is set in. And as I said yesterday, uh, we're going to go over the hourly time frame, uh, which we were talking about a cross strategy yesterday. And we got a bit of a fake out. And what that was was right here when the green, when the yellow 21 exponential crosses the green 55 exponential, that's typically your buy, right? So you would have bought here or here, somewhere right here. Would have went long. And then we set a stop market right here below the last wick low at 41,500. And I did say, hey, look, low downside risk, good upside potential. What was the downside risk from that trade somewhere around here? 
you know, two and a half percent, or I think it was one and a half percent from where we did it yesterday. So low downside risk and with the good upside potential, if uh, this range wanted to get break broken, we would have probably headed up towards 45,000, somewhere in that region. Needless to say, uh, always good to have some kind of a trading plan lets you know, hey, when did your trade fail or, you know, what's your point of failure, right? Because you don't want to be one of those guys sitting there holding, um, you know, with that grin on your face. I don't know if you've seen the meme of the old guy. He turns with his coffee mug and he's like, ah, oh, I just became a long-term hodler, right? And um, that's what we don't want to see. Anyways. Um, kind of, um, yesterday, the first major warning system signal I saw was when this ma major red candle was, uh, playing out right while I was doing my stream. And I did say, Hey, look, that in, in combination with the NASDAQ breaking down, uh, looked like, you know, Bitcoin was going to turn a little bit bearish yesterday. And what else did we talk about yesterday was the daily Stokes, which, <clears throat> We're crossed up back up yesterday, and that was a good sign. However, we are now crossed back down, momentum to the downside, and we rejected heading into the bullish control zone. We are back in the bearish control zone, and that is a bit of a you know bearish reset. And why am I repeating all this uh, to the people who were not here yesterday? And hopefully, you know, you can use this information in your analysis to either protect what you have or perhaps add to your position. So here's the opportunity for the daily reverse, uh, the daily reversal, the hopium that we could possibly talk about here. And the first thing we'd want to do is see a daily closure back above 44,220. And that would be our first sign. Okay, we got a higher high, right? And then what we'd want to see is a higher low somewhere in here. And that would be, you know, how we'd get, we'd start to see, because price action matters most. Forget all the other indicators, price action, trend identification is what matters most. Everything else is pretty much tertiary, something you use to firm up your bias. And um, so, <clears throat> again, Stokes are back down, breaking into a critical level. And not only that, so... We got daily soaks down, four hour soaks down, one hour's back up, okay. What about the two day, crossing back down, three days, way down there, five days, way down there. How about the weekly, way, way down there. And again, these are some bouncy areas, right? So typically um, that's what you wanna be looking out for um, on the stokes. And when those stokes do cross back up, and so what else do we have? We have volatility starting to expand from a low level on the weekly. And we just got our first lower low. Um, so what is some other hopium we can talk about today? Because we have been talking about this point here, 37,500. We said we do not want to ever see any daily closures back below 37,500. Why is that? Well, we've been talking about for some time the hash ribbons indicator. Uh, let's see if I can pull that up really quick. There we go. On the daily. And the hash ribbons indicator. And what does that say? It says once you get the blue buy signal, which we received here back on August 7th, call it uh, August 9th, August 7th, whatever you want to call it. But basically this indicator, you can back test it and it shows that once you get a blue buy signal, Bitcoin has never gone back and broke the last daily low with a closure. Now, you can get a wick below there and be completely fine. Just don't want to have a daily closure below there, right? So we could get a wick. I mean, maybe we got get a big wick down to 30,000 or 35,000 and fill the gap on the CMEs, which we've been talking about as well. And then it's just a big wick down, gets bought back up, and then we just close back above 37,500. And for me, that would be a very, very early good sign that, hey, that hash ribbons indicator is going to continue to play out. I'll just show you one more example of a blue buy signal here. Okay, we got the blue buy signal. 
boom, that was December 2nd of 2020. And what was price action right there? December 2nd of 2020. So here would have been your buy signal right here. Boom. Preferably, could have put some kind of a stop limit somewhere around 16,300. Stop, stop market, however you do it. I'm not sure, but Bitcoin did come back down near the low, but it never closed below on that signal. Okay. The only time this blue buy signal ever failed was after coronavirus dump time, which was right here. And then, I don't know why my... So this was coronavirus dump time, down to 4,500. We got the blue buy signal somewhere back over here. And so we did have a closure below. There's one time out of 18 different iterations. You can go back and test it yourself. Once you get the blue buy, you never come back and break, break the last daily higher low. And where's that coming in at right now? At 37,500. Now, could we have a black swan event again like coronavirus? Could, could uh, you know, something happen? I don't know. Uh, Russia declares war on Ukraine. I don't know. Um, but what I would say, though, I don't think that it's lights out yet. We haven't lost our hopium. We have no daily closures below 37,500. Yeah, 37,500. So um, that's the hopium. Okay. Um, more on the doomium side. Um is the weekly, which we said we don't want to see any weekly closures below 40,000, right? So we've got, <clears throat> right now Bitcoin has about two days and five hours to wick back up and close above 40,000. Uh, but that is our first lower low. And then you'd be looking out for a lower high. And this is where I'd be prepared to really start to get bearish is if we had something like this, Bitcoin plays out a bounce to the 618 or the 0 0.5 Fib retracement coming in. What do you know? Right at 52,600 or 55,000, somewhere in that range, right? If Bitcoin wants to come up there and put in a lower high and confirm the weekly downtrend, something like this, we pop back up. Then we come back and then we start to violate that area again, you know, back below. 45,000 or 48,000, something like that. That would be a big, big red flag that one, we have a weekly reversal, weekly downtrend. Uh, two, uh, we can look at some much lower targets, you know, with a bounce at 30,000, uh, very likely a decent sized bounce from that point. But um, yeah, uh, so again, Confirmation is key. We haven't got a daily confirmation. We haven't got a weekly confirmation yet. So that's, you know, something to, that's something on the board. Now, another thing I wanted to bring up a little bit more on the bear side is this guy over here. And I'm just going to put up my primary chart. Um, I believe it's this one. And yeah, what else do you see on the weekly chart here? You've got Stokes down, volatility increasing, RSI's in the bearish control zone. And are we getting any kind of, uh, no, we're not getting any kind of bearish or bullish divergence there. Bullish divergence here, yes. So that would be our first higher low. So what's bullish divergence or hidden bullish divergence is when price is making higher lows, but RSI is making lower lows. And that's bullish divergence. And how would that get confirmed? Well, we'd want to see a little wick down and then a closure back above 43.793. And that would turn Stokes back up. And then we could talk about, hey, maybe this was just a big fake out. But until we get confirmation, nothing to be said. <clears throat> okay. So... Um, I think that's about all that I would want to say today on Bitcoin. I mean, what would today on the hourly 
you know, uh, what would, you know, actually put it not on the hourly, on the daily, if we could come back, let's say on a four hour and close back above 41,600, our last hourly breakdown area, which was right here. If we could somehow pop back up above here, 41,000, call it 41,600, I'd be ready to say, hey, a little bit of a fake out and we're probably going to head higher. But open interest, again, needs to come down to around 10 billion for that reset to take place. I don't think that's happening today. And I'd say it would be a hopium dream. Okay. So let's move on to a couple other coins that we've been following. Uh, Ethereum, another big player breaking down here on the daily. And I would say about Ethereum here is, you know, we're probably going to get a bounce sooner than later, somewhere off this region. Looks like we're coming down to 2,600. If 2,600 fails, I believe Ethereum is going to head down to about 2,000 bucks, somewhere around, yeah, somewhere around there. If this region fails right here, at 26,000, or sorry, 2650, call it 2500 on a daily time frame. I'm looking for Ethereum to head back down around 2000 bucks. No big deal. It'll pick itself back up. The market will come back at some point. It's not all over. This is just a short term, you know. I wouldn't, I, don't, I, I can't say it's guaranteed to work out and be a short term correction, but. In the big scheme of things over the next two to five years, I think this will be a blip on the map. Okay, so next one I want to talk about, Luna. Luna has been one of these altcoins that is a bit stronger. And here's what I would say about Mr. Luna. Any kind of a daily below 66 bucks and we're looking to head down probably around 51 in that region back above 87 is going to confirm a breakout and new all-time highs um so below 68 big problems above 87 big profits okay um on the other side of the fence we have another one we've been following called adam Adam, and just to throw this on a four hour and take a look, yeah, this one's coming down. Coming down at least to 67, and if that breaks, uh, watch out. And so what do we have here? We got Stokes coming down, volatility increasing. We've got RSI. Let's see, are we playing out any divergence plays here? So nope. Price is making lower lows. RSI is making lower lows. Okay. Here would be your opportunity. Um, and, you know, perhaps, perhaps your first sign, uh, and this is on a four hour, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really look at that. But this is one of the stronger ones, and I'm just looking for these areas to get held. You know, 68 there, and 86 to the upside on the daily. Simplicity. But, you know, this region gets violated on the daily, 50 bucks. Probably he probably heading down there. All right. Next one, Adam. <clears throat> Cosmos versus U.S. dollar. And I'm going to put this on a four-hour. And I'm going to say this, right? Any kind of a four-hour closure below 36 bucks, very, very likely continuation down to about 32 any kind of a four hour back above 41 or call it 42 and I'm looking for new all time highs. Okay. That's pretty simple right there. Hanging on by a thread, Mr. Sand, Mr. Sandman. How have you been doing? Well, unfortunately he's not been doing too well as we're getting a fresh breakdown closing below the last wick low and the green or the yellow crossing the green to the downside that's your sell and um you know there's your there's your stock market on the other side right if uh the thing wants to reverse on you 
but uh, very likely sand's coming down to about three bucks with a bounce and judge it from there. Um, what else? Yeah, so we're freshly banking down. What else do you have? Volatility increasing from a low level. Momentum is down on the daily. What about the five day? Coming way down, two day, down, four hour, down, one hour. We got a one hour reversal. All right. And it's not even a one hour reversal because what? It's just a bearish reset. That's a bearish reset. And yeah, we could get a small bounce up to, you know, 380. As price is making lower lows, RSI is making higher lows, gets a bounce up to 376. And I think we are probably, I mean, it'd be lucky to get there. Okay, uh, that's covering Sandcoin for today. Uh, Phantom, another one of the stronger ones, but showing some weakness today as we did just break this one hour major resistance level. And let's take a look at the four hour. So what do we got on this guy? <clears throat> Phantom breaking down on the four. So I would say a four hour closure anywhere. Oh yeah, that was my level right there at 270. Uh, very likely gets a continuation down to 228, uh, probably with a small bounce. And then I'm looking for 218 to hold. If 218 does not hold, You're going to run into some big problems. And uh, I think that thing could head down quite a bit. Um, so we are looking for that green 55 on the daily to hold up. And um, as you can see, we still kind of got uh, higher highs and higher lows on this guy. So that's a signal of strength. Rose, Rose doing the same thing here, right? We got on the daily higher highs, higher lows. Want to see a low put in somewhere around here um, on the four hour. If we violate 31 bucks, uh, I'd say we get a move down to about you know 24 at least. So, you know, looking probably for a small bounce from here. Let's see. What about the five day? Five days, bouncing off the nine. How many drives of bearish divergence do we have? One, so what is bearish divergence? Price is making higher highs. RSI is making lower highs, right? So we got one, two, three, four drives of bearish divergence. I say we get a move down to 31 cents at a minimum. If not, down to the green 55 at 23 cents. That is... It, and then where would I invalidate that on the four hour? Yeah, you got the cross right here. So range wick is the last range wick. So you got the cross. Here's your last range wick at 49 cents. That would be your stop market. Okay. Um, and you probably, you know, you don't blindly short right here. Typically, you want to uh, wait for the retest of the 21 or the green 55 before you really get short. Okay. <clears throat> Matic also showing one of the stronger ones, but now showing some weakness. And this one looks like we already got a four hour violation below 198. Actually, I think it should have been more closer to 191 in that region. And that, um, it looks like this one wants to come down to about 160 on this move. And this does look a bit like a head and shoulders. Uh, I'm not going to call that one. I am not going to call that one. Let's take a look at the hourly time frame. So what was the hourly range here that we are now breaking down? And we look for a bearish retracement. Using our fibs here. So where's the next target down? 160 with the small bounce. And whoa. Where would that line up on the weekly? If we came down to a dollar.
that that would that would be absolutely catastrophic for Mr. Matic. I don't necessarily think that's what's happening. And you know, until Bitcoin wants to cast a this thing's gonna do whatever Bitcoin does, right? Bitcoin picks itself up here from thirty seven thousand five hundred. You know, I could see this thing just partying back up onto new all time highs. However, Bitcoin wants to get you know, wants to take a little trip down down to doggy town. Well Maddox probably gonna go with it. What's another one we used to cover? Gala. Gala Games. This one did a 10x. Um, what a amazing opportunity that would have been. Where, where'd it go? Gala. Okay. Should be where? Why is it not adding to my chart? I think I I took it off. Okay, Gala. One more time. Try again. There it is. Gala. That's looking very, very sad. Probably gets a small bounce here. Could test up to 30 cents, even 35. But again, you got the bearish cross right there. The 21 cross and the green 55. And <clears throat> that here's your range wick low. Actually, here was your range wick low as soon as that got violated, right? You got the cross. The, that's the range wick high actually that that's that's where you would have put your stop market and you'd still be in that trade you know laughing to the bank right now gala on the four hour i mean this one looks like it probably gives a small bounce here but if that bounce fails and we start to Start to close below 20 cents. Uh, next stop down is going to be 13 cents. Okay. That's it for Mr. Gala. And to the upside, where does this, when do we even start to talk about a reversal? Um, I'd say back above 36 cents. That'll be, yeah, back above 36 cents. Kind of our major breakdown level right there. Okay. Next one I want to talk about. Gold. Where is my gold? Gold. A lot of people are still interested in gold these days. Those gold American Eagles, those gold proof coins, those gold bars, those St. Gaudens, those Liberties, right? They're all out there. And gold having a little bit of a break to the upside. We got a four hour break above this range. And very likely, I think we're going to revisit the high somewhere around 1870. If you look at it on a daily, where would we confirm the breakout above 1875? And that's going to get us back up to 1900. A little bit of a slow mover compared to old cryptocurrency. Okay, what else did we say we're going to check in on the dollar? My good old dollars, symbol DXY. Again, this isn't actually dollars. It's measured against other currencies. But needless to say, it does give us a bias on how it's going to play against other assets. When the dollar goes up, Bad for risk on assets. When the dollar goes down in value, good for risk on assets like the NASDAQ and Bitcoin. Um, and what do we see here? Dollar popping back up as a stock market and Bitcoin is getting just absolutely slacked right now. Okay, so dollar, my guess is this thing goes back up. My, this is a weekly test of the 21. You got the green 55 crossing there. And remember the dollar moves like molasses. So any targets that we have on this guy, we talked about the breakout level right there. We had that retracement in. Oh, what do you know? You touch the 1618, sells off, maybe comes back and tests down to the, to the 100. But the next target on the dollar is at a hundred, the dollar might be worth a dollar. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's it doesn't really work that way. But uh, next target on this thing, I'm expecting this thing up to he head towards 100. Um, now, could Powell come out? And I did hear on Bloomberg today, the 10-year yield is about to get the biggest move to the downside that we've seen in months. Um, that is, if the 10-year yield wants to go down. But um, 
Yeah, so covering up the dollar. Dollar's macro bullish on a weekly time frame. On the, look at those lines in there. On the monthly, that's a monthly reversal, right? You get your higher high, you get your slightly higher low, and boom, higher high. Now what are we looking for? Another higher low and trend continuation. And again, this is the two week, another powerful time frame for the dollar. And yeah, that's not necessarily good for Bitcoin or stocks. Okay, now NASDAQ breaking down. And we did talk about this. Very likely coming down on the daily time frame. As soon as we broke this level, we said, hey, very likely coming down to 14,400. Uh, if this level breaks, if that level breaks, next stop 13.9 probably continues down to about 13,000. And what, what kind of breakdown would that be? From the top to the bottom, that's 20%. That's not a crash. 30%. Hey, maybe that, maybe that'll do it. I don't know. Look at, look at what happened February to April of 2020. I think that was the, was that the coronavirus dump? I should remember, right? The year that disappeared from us all. The year that evaporated. <laughs> that was a 30% correction. Yeah, that was it right? It would have been May, April, May of 2020. Oh, breakdown started in February before coronavirus. Yeah, I remember it. It broke down before coronavirus lockdowns actually happened. It broke down when Chinese lockdowns started happening. And I'm sure you guys have heard uh, about what's going on in China right now and the Olympics and all that stuff and the strict lockdown procedures they are kind of rolling out in a few of their cities. Not looking good. Okay. So S&P probably going to be stronger than NASDAQ, but it's breaking its level, probably heading down to its level. Might get a small bounce off that purple 200, but I'd say 4,200 is in the cards. If that fails, then we're talking 4,000 bucks. And that's on S&P futures. How's the Dow holding up? Dow's looking stronger than everybody. But it's also been the, I don't know if I'd call that underperformer, but it definitely performed to the downside. Tech sector held up a little bit more in that coronavirus dump. That was a 40% correction. March of 2020. That, that was pretty nasty. So yeah, this is the major area on this guy that I would be watching out for is, you know, somewhere around here. Any kind of a break there? Oh, look, we got that measure moved perfectly. This level broke, we hit it perfect. Perfect move down to 34,368 on the Dow. Anyways, um, it's all in the hands of the Fed and the printing presses. You know, they're really going to have to turn things up here. I think uh, loosen up some policy if this market wants to turn around. You know, everybody on Bloomberg wants to say that, oh, people have all this money in their savings and they're just going to pull it out of their pocket and they're going to buy the dip. They're going to buy the dip on the NASDAQ. They're going to buy the dip on Bitcoin. And... Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens because that's that's been the trend, right? Anytime we've got a correction down to this 200 exponential, people have come in and bought like crazy. And that would help out the stock market. So we want dollar down, stocks up, and Bitcoin to go with it. Okay. So again, just wrapping up my thoughts on Bitcoin here. Any kind of a daily closure below 37500 it gets continuation down to the low 30s, okay? If we can get a daily closure back above 44,350, very likely short stop at 46 and, you know, gets up to that $52,000 region. And that's where we're looking for the bull trap of a lifetime, the bull or the bear trap. So let's keep a close eye on this. And thank you guys so much for watching today. Remember, we're not financial advisors. If you enjoyed our daily analysis, Click the subscribe button. 
below get daily reminders of whenever we post videos whenever we post resources we drop also if you are interested in learning about incorporating Bitcoin into your IRA click on the link in the description below you can get a free ebook today additionally there is a link you can set up a trading view account and get it all set up just like this for free um, just scroll down our tab and find the one that says trading view tutorial and that'll get you right there all right again Bitcoin Advisors channel my name is Chris I'm signing out from Westlake Village and I'll be talking to you soon have a blessed and wonderful rest of your Friday and rest of your weekend take care